Check it out. We are hanging out with James from Engaging the Phenomenon. James pulled me out of this, like the sewer, literally. He pulled me out of nowhere. <laughs> Honestly, if it wasn't for James, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be doing anything I'm doing right now. James literally contacted me on Twitter. I'd been on Twitter for a while and I was just, you know, putting a little bit here and there and just talking. And James was like, hey, man, you should do a, you know, do something. You should do a podcast. You should do a YouTube channel. I'm like, no way, dude. And he literally held my hand through the whole entire process. He egged me on, got me going and did it and i have you to thank for this whole entire thing honestly dude thank you very very much i wouldn't have done it without you man honestly i wouldn't have i would still be sitting in in my basement here being a lurker and not adding to the community you know not showing anybody any of the stuff of my research and whatever but you were like hey you should do this and i really appreciate it and thank you for coming on and hanging out with me tonight and hopefully we get to talk about a, cu a couple cool things and uh, keep it going so dude welcome and thank you yeah, sure thing. It's a pleasure, man. I think you may have found your way into this one way or another. Anyways, I'm just a catalyst. So no way, dude. It's all thanks to you. Honestly, big, big praises. I, I owe you still. I mean, it's been amazing this whole ride. It's been fun, dude. And you've been in the CE5 thing forever, right? Like, honestly, you know, you and I have talked before, but I think you, you were telling me that you you brought CE5 to social media, right? Like, and how long ago yeah. was that? That was in around 2009. Um, so for, for whatever reason, because C SETI at that time was like the real source of CE5 and there wasn't much going on outside of that other than maybe E SETI. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, I, you know, I was, a, I'm a millennial. So the, it was for me, I'm like, well, how come this is not on uh, Facebook? <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. So um, back in 2009, I was connecting with people that, um, I was looking for other CE fivers, you know. Right. So I created a place where uh, people that were into CE five, uh, you know, some people who are already doing the work or people who are looking for it, um, could coordinate, talk, and possibly meet in the field to do field work and you know exchange information, stories, videos, you know, whatever, anything. Right. Um, so I created the CE five initiative. Uh, Facebook group, um, which it's got like 27,000 members now, but it started wow. off, there were like 50 people <laughs> and there were like 200 and those 200 people were like people from the CSETI forum. Wow. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure that CSETI got rid of their forum wow. because of what I was doing and they just saw how <laughs> obsolete it was uh, because There's I was coordinating with some of the CSETI insiders then, right? like right. Uh, Debbie Foch and, and people that were on... Um, the inner circle of C SETI. And they saw they were in the group and they saw what I was doing and you know connecting all the working groups across the United States and and then you know people from other countries. And um the C SETI forum was just so inactive. And my <laughs> the group was just it was insane. Yeah. It started out as a community page. Right. Uh, because there were no groups at that time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, and I was looking, I was like, I want this to be more interactive. And then right. Facebook created the group feature, which nice. I had, you know, never heard of. And uh, so when they, when they created the group feature, I was like, this is exactly what it's got to be. So people can participate instead of making me making posts and them commenting on it. They can make their own posts, you know? Right. And post videos and like whatever, right? They can do yeah, anything. Yeah. 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 It's just the, the group format was so much better than the community page. You know, the community page is more like a marketing thing, you know? Right, um, right, right. Group pages, interaction. So then so, it just skyrocketed after that, right? I mean, geez. It's, it started off with that group and it's spawned. Yeah. Now there's hundreds of groups. Right. Now there's hundreds of Facebook groups that are dedicated to CE5. Uh, most of them are like uh, like CE5 New York, CE5 Ohio, CE, you know, CE5 Texas, the Oaks, yeah, and yeah. some of them go down to like the city. Oh, wow. Um, That's cool. And all the different countries. So now there's hundreds of groups, but it all started with the, uh, the original CE5 initiative group. And um, it's, it's insane to see how much it's grown. Dude, it's amazing. And then now, I mean, like we kind of like, I've seen, you know, like Demi, Debbie Lovato and like a bunch of other people, like, I don't yeah. know if it was the Kardashians or one of them or something was like, they're talking about CE5. And, you know, I mean, it's been a huge thing. Once you start doing that with those influencers and stuff, I mean, it just skyrockets and people get into it. They had like no business. And I don't say no business. That's kind of a rude thing to say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, like they, they have no idea what it is. And some people are getting into it with that. And they're like, this is amazing, you know, and other people are, I think they're probably freaking out. I don't know. Do you have any experience with that? Well, you know, that's, that's funny that you say that. Cause, um, 
you know, actually going back, people, people were into it. They were just low key about it. And, you know, I think we have the whole uh, December 2017, you know, revelation of ATIP because of Leslie Kane, uh, you know, Helena Cooper, um, that story, the ATIP story, Lou Elizondo, that broke the ice because there were people uh, like high, you know, celebrities going to see SETI events. Right. If you go to Dr. Greer's book, Contact Countdown to Transformation, you know, it talks about Tom DeLong and Blink-182 going to the events. And Tom would talk about it here and there, but it wasn't like a known thing, you know? Right, right. Um, so that's, there were, and when I went in 2011, 20, I went in 2010 to an event. It was like a three-day event. And I don't, I don't really recall any like, celebrities but in 2011 there was a celebrity and um like nameless a, you can't name the celebrity who's there they don't want to um, be named you know what he's i forget the i forget the guy's name now he's he was on an hbo show ah and uh he actually he ended up being the narrator for unacknowledged oh okay okay cool something jane thomas uh, jane maybe i don't know yeah, i forget okay. his name but he you know he's some big actor and yeah um people like that would go to see SETI events, but they were low key about it. And uh, now I guess after the Pentagon thing, people are, you know, even you got football stars talking about CE5. So right. that's, that's insane. I never, I never thought I would have seen the day. I mean, I, I saw it growing uh, and even growing exponentially, Right. but I didn't think it was going to come to a point where you got like, you know, NFL football players talking about CE5 close encounters of the fifth kind of the documentary and experiences that they had you know, on a video or a podcast and got like millions of views. That's insane. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's growing. I mean, it's like, there's no stopping it, man. Like, and you, you were at the forefront. I mean, you did that whole social media thing before it even existed. Right. I mean, you were doing yeah. it. And I um, mean, yeah. And again, it's just like circumstantial. It's, it just happens to be because I'm a millennial that to me was like, this is common <laughs> sense. Uh, this is what I'd like to see built. So yeah, I'm just gonna, yeah. it's not here. So I'll make it, you know, and yeah, which is right, you know, dude, you did it. It, it was really awesome. Cool. It was awesome. And I, I met, um, you know, back in the day too, like 2009, when there were like 50 people on there, you know, and like 200, whatever I had ended up meeting like a ton of them, you yeah. know, it's at, at um, just CE five events that, um, that we had planned amongst ourselves. Oh, cool. And like, um, and met up uh, locally or by them or in like, I remember there was one in Pittsburgh where we got like together with 20 people. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, I actually ended up meeting a lot of those people in the original days, but, um, now it's, it's, I, I can't even, it's hard to keep track of the group now, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like managing it has become like a full-time job on top of everything else, you know, forget about, uh, UFO Twitter and forget about, um, you know, making content and my own research and then going out in the field and do, doing CE5, that group is like, a uh, you know, thankfully I got two, um, admins on there with me nice uh to help out because it's it's quite a task now wow it's amazing man and do you, i mean do you think that it'll get to a point where it's too much like i mean obviously there's more, the more the exposure the more people the better but do you think you're going to get to a point where it's like okay n now it's like the you know the, the intimacy or the you know the people aren't connected and people are treating it more of like a a party or something you it's know what gotten i mean there. it's has gotten it, there has it already but okay it's but that's it's a growing phase mm -hmm. um it's a grow you know like growing pains it's something it's just like with anything you have uh you know even in like the meditation circles there was like the hardcore dharma mm -hmm. uh circle you know coming up and these were like hardcore practitioners and back then in the ce5 i mean most of the people were like really serious practitioners right now it's kind of just like a almost like a fad or a trend. Um, and you know, for, it's just, just people having the, the general awareness of the possibility of being able to have, um, you know, contact with UFO intelligence. That's a game changer. Totally. You know, just planting that seed of this is a possibility that changes everything. Yeah. So, you know, even if there's like a portion of it, that's somewhat watered down, Mm -hmm. from what it was and not everybody's a hardcore practitioner it doesn't matter you know it's 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 necessary we need you know it's people need to know about it regardless of if they're doing it or if they're doing it seriously or not and um you know there are things i would like to see improve 
in the standards of CE5, but that's something I'm hoping to do with engaging the phenomenon. Right. And it's going to take years to do it's it's, and hopefully I have people that are able to work with me along the way and help make that possible because it's going to be a task. Yeah, you know, totally, totally. Because, well, I mean, um, because everybody's going to do their own thing and split off in their own flavors and do this own thing. But I mean, not necessarily that's bad, though. That could be actually in, innovative no, and that's, new things, that, too, right? That's a really good thing. But um, what I think needs to happen is that there needs to be a standard of saying that, you know, this represents, uh, you know, at the bare minimum of what CE5 can be. Okay. Because, like, the problem is um, you have, like, just say you have a thousand people upload a video of a CE5 event. Right. Like 999 of those videos are misidentifications mm-hmm. because not everybody's trained and, you know, people get excited and that's fine. That's mm-hmm. fine. Everybody was there at some point. It's a learning thing. Um, but y- there needs to be a place to say that this is like, this is actual CE5. You know, it could be like agreed on among the community of this is like a standard of, um, that represents the, you know, it being something genuine rather than somebody's first impression of seeing a CE5 is a, is a video of a satellite or something. Right. Um, right. Almost like a NIST standard, right? I mean, if you can do NIST standards and, you know, kind of government standards or regulate, I mean, kind of like something uh, like this is the minimum of, of this is what this is, right? Yeah. Just like something that a, just a small collection saying this is, this, you know, this represents genuine CE5. You can kind of measure your own, C5 based on this and then have, you know, basic guidelines and training and some, you know, a small place where there's a good collection of data. That's all. Yeah. You know, rather than, you know, your source of C5, you know, I hate to say it, even being Dr. Greer, when he's made his share, you know, his fair share of misidentifications, he's had incredible events that have changed the course of disclosure history right. within C5, mm-hmm. you know, that, uh, you know, uh, naval and air force pilots were at those events and it happened, you know, because of those events occurring, big meetings happen. Wow. You know, and that's because of CE5 because they were like, holy shit, this is real. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Um, so but it took somebody um, like that. Right. Totally. Yeah. But he's also had some pictures where I'm like, it's like light reflecting off a moth. And it's like, dude, you're, you know, you're pioneering this thing. You should know better, <laughs> you know. So he yeah. he's had his his fumbles, and there's the flare video, the Vero Beach one. Um, yeah, and, you know those are flares, and uh, you know I don't, I don't want to be a party pooper, but it's it's obvious. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a whole another controversy that we can go into, but let's we'll save that for another time. That's a whole, <laughs> yeah, that could be that could a be whole another video. Really, there's that could be a whole another video. Yeah, we could talk um, about but, that too. But, but those are flares. Those yeah. are flares. And, and what do you think about his latest thing? I mean, people are just tearing him up on on UFO Twitter, man. They're like, yeah, you could be my friend for ten grand and have dinner with me, and it's like, I you know I hate to say it. Um, you know, and f- I have to say, first off, that, you know, we we would not be here where we are now without Dr. Greer's Compl- work. I agree. Without yep. the disclosure, disclosure project. Pro- disclosure huge. Disclosure to the project, Stars yeah. Academy, although it's similar to Interspace, um, Tom DeLong's entire approach was modeled after the Disclosure Project and his early interactions with Dr. Greer. And he saw what Dr. Greer was doing to talk to these insiders, you know, all all that is modeled after everything Dr. Greer did. Yeah. And not only that, I'm sure that plenty of the people that are kind of involved in the background now were exposed to a lot of that early work. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, Dr. Greer kind of brought this on himself uh, because number one, he's burned a lot of bridges. Mm-hmm. Uh, and number two, um, the money thing is, is ridiculous in my opinion. And, and everything I've done with C for, you know, all this stuff has all been for free, you know, right, and I've right. dedicated, I can't tell you how many thousands of hours I put into, you know, um, C five work and networking people and managing groups and, you know, making videos and content and everything else, speaking to people, interviewing people, uh, you know, privately and talking mm-hmm. about them, about their experiences and helping people get a uh, working group started. Yeah. And I, you know, I mean, maybe I have Dr. Greer to thank as, as a learning example, because I, you know, the money thing is, I could see a bare minimum kind of thing where it's like, yeah, this guy needs to live, but yeah. dude, the dude's living large. I think he's made more money in ufology than any other person ever. Wow. Just because, from the CE5 um, too, right? I mean, just from all of look, the CE5 look at this. Stuff. You have a, and again, I'm not trying to bash him here, but th- this is just the facts. 
you got, say you have 25 participants, right? Mm -hmm. And they're each paying three grand. That's 75 G's for one week. Wow. You know, and some of these events are actually more than three grand. Some of them are four grand now, given there's cost involved in that. So he did say he does like four of those a year, you know, that's 300 G's just in that forget about selling books and programs or memberships to anything else. That's just from the CE five trainings and that's not including donations and everything else. Wow. Um, Wow. So yeah, it doesn't make sense for him to be a doctor. (laughs) He's making more money doing this. Well, and he's kind of making what he would have made. So I get, I, I guess maybe that's what he's going for. I guess maybe he's got a standard um, of living and he's going to keep it up or something. I, you know, I don't know. I don't but, know. You know guy. He's got a few houses and <laughs> it is what it is, you know? Um, and, and back in the day he was getting donations of like, I'm sure Tom DeLong donated like a, a large sum of money to help his effort out. Was, and you know what? It, it, it did make things happen. The disclosure project, I think he said it cost him like a million dollars Wow! to pull that off. Wow. And some of it was his own money. Some of it was um, Dr. Jan Bravo and other people and a bunch of other, I'm sure Rockefeller donated too. Yeah. 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 I mean, no, I mean, there's no, <clears throat> there's no denying that he basically held the torch and brought us to the point we're at right now. I mean, the fo- one of the funnier things, and I think it was probably in a video that you did was that whole um, Greer um, DeLong video that you had that was like Greer yeah. versus DeLong. That was a great video, man. I yeah. love that. But I think in that video, if I'm not mistaken, you were like, you know, Greer was carrying like a backpack full of VHS tapes around with him. And he was like, <laughs> he was hanging out at Blink-182 shows backstage with Tom. And he's got like this duffel bag or whatever full of like testimony on VHS tapes and just like walking around with him. And, you know, like it was like, that was the nineties, right? I mean, that was like, a that was the late nineties. And yeah. you got to remember too, that in those early days when, when you know, and and James Wolsey, the the former CIA director for Clinton, mm-hmm. he just came forward in in uh, John Greenwald's Black Bolt video and said, "Yeah, the meeting did happen." And it, it, he, it sounds like Greer embellished a little, but yeah, it did happen like that. At where you know, years ago, he wrote a letter saying it was just a dinner party. You're not meeting the head of uh, the director <laughs> of the CIA for dinner just for you know, out of fun. John yeah. Peterson helped put together the meeting, and it was to talk UFOs. You know, they were talking shop. So that's what it was. Wolsey came on the record about that. But back then, John Podesta was involved. Mm. And here you have Podesta helping out Tom DeLong. So it's, you know, it's really come full circle. Totally has been, man. I think the whole thing is just, um, it's not, I mean, you think it's a giant community, but in actuality, it's not, right? I mean, I mean, there's a lot of the same people or, you know, the big key players anyway, they're all the faces and names that, you know, you know, and, and it just like what you said with Woolsey coming out and like everybody else, like Brennan and everybody else is just, (sighs) just keeps rolling. Right. Yeah. And everybody's just like, okay. And I swear, man, it's got to be this orchestrated thing. In my mind, anyway, it's an orchestrated th- event that's going on that's like, okay, April, this is going to happen. March, this is going to happen. You know, and they're just rolling it back to where it's just going to make it easier and you know, easier. It's, you it's, know, it's so hard to tell. And this is like a philosophical kind of uh, consciousness thing. Is it like, you know, in retrospect, you know, it, it's hard to tell if things, it's like a self fulfilled prophecy. Right or, you know, consciousness working on its own kind of like molding reality in that way or perception without awareness or, or, you know, certain things are by design, you know, human design and certain things are being orchestrated on a higher level. And, and it just looks like when you look back at it, it's like, Oh my God. But I I do think to some extent, yeah, these people are planning. um, And when I say these people, I'm talking about people that are making moves Right. Uh, to make things happen. Some of them are coordinating this for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously somebody green lighted this effort. It just didn't just magically happen. Somebody uh, or somebody or some group green light and said, okay, let's move forward with this and see what, what happens, Right. where it goes from there and how far we can take this kind of thing. And I think it's probably going better than they imagined. That's great. I mean, no, that's, that's awesome. just my guess. Well, yeah. I and, mean, you would hate to be the other way because it would be like, then they slam the door shut again and it's just, you know, back to the denials. And I, and all at that, the same know? time, though, I don't think there is a slamming door. I think the door is broken off at this point, man. Nice. Good. That's Hinges good. and all. <laughs> that's great. This one's not, it's not going back anywhere. That's, that's it. I mean, 
I can't believe Forget Susan it. Go came out or Guff or whatever, how you ever say it, if the spokesperson for the Pentagon came out and said, yeah, those um, videos and photos that Corbell released are real. Like that, yeah. it, it was just amazing too. Like what? That was inst that was like two days or like 48 hours or something. Yeah. And that's, you know, that just shows you the, uh, we're in uncharted territories. That's where we are now. And, and I mean, I think it's important that people realize it's like, wow, you know, the Navy these are navy videos right uh these are the unclassified ones man this is you know <laughs> this is just this is just kind of like doing everybody doing what they can to move things forward and, and it's great it's yeah. great uh we need it totally. uh, but the classified stuff is that's that's going to be the stuff that's like really crazy stuff that's going to yeah, make people's heads explode like the video that you know you, you do this amazing thing it's called ask twitter and you know you've asked me to do it a bunch of times and i love it and you just get everybody's opinion on a topic right and the last one that you did was um um implications of disclosure right and that's just gonna pop people's heads off right i mean yeah yeah in my mind that's my thing it was my it was mine was short and sweet but basically it's like people are going to freak out and some of them aren't people are going to be yes. And some other people are going to need to like need their hands held <laughs> for a lot of this stuff, you know? Yeah. I mean, I know there's some people like, you know, I, everywhere I go, I end up having a conversation with somebody, mm -hmm. uh, you know, my friends at work, they know kind of what I do and what I'm into. Yeah. And there's this one guy, I love him. A uh, great guy, but he, I can, he's, he has a hard time. Uh, you know, when I talk about it, there's something always that kicks back and I never try to push it. Like, right, right, you know, right. Um, I don't want to ever infringe on somebody's beliefs. That's their right. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll kind of play devil's advocate a little. And, um, and now you have the Pentagon kind of reporting on it and, and admitting to it. So, you know, if you're talking about it in public, you have a lot more um, clout, right? Yeah. You can, you can say more definitively like, Oh, we, well, we don't know what they are, uh, but they're there you know, kind of thing. Um, and yeah, I can see him. I mean, I, I think kind of thanks to me because of the conversations we have, if there is like an, an announcement tomorrow, he'll be like, eh, yeah, He's, John Dolly was talking about this. I know, you know, but <laughs> yeah, I know he's been telling me for years. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise I think he would have had a, uh, an even harder time with it. So I think yeah. that people like us doing what we're doing, you know, making this a normal conversation, yeah, uh, you know, Luel, as Lou Elizondo says, like making a household conversation, um, you know, us reaching out to our different networks and families and friends and uh, different social networks and stuff, you know, is, are all part of the process. Totally. So, totally. I mean, it needs to happen. And I think that, you know, once again, thanks again for egging me on and helping me out with all this, man. I wouldn't be here without you, honestly. Uh, I appreciate you, man. Um, you just gave me the confidence and, and the, uh, you know, the spirit to, to do it. So whatever you did, keep doing it, man. And, and I'm sure you've probably done it for a, a bunch of other people out there besides me, because that's kind of the guy you are. You're an amazing human and I appreciate you. And I'm sure I everybody appreciate else appreciates that, you too, man. It's, honestly, I'm just, uh, just doing what I do, man. I keep doing it, dude. You're doing an amazing but you're, job. You know, you're doing it. You're doing a better job at this whole thing than me. No I way, mean, dude. You know, <laughs> you're no way. I'm telling you, you're the way you're, you're built for this kind of thing. You're, you got a very professional, uh, you know, sounding voice and way of talking to people. It's great, man. Oh, so dude, thank you and, very much, man. And, uh, and you know what, I'm, you know, people know you're a Mason. Yeah. Um, so, you, you know, that kind of whole, um, occult knowledge thing plays heavily into this, not only in kind of like the underpinnings and the foundations, but the ancient history. Oh man. You know, that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> But, That's another and, three you know, videos we could do. Totally. Yeah. yeah. But you know, you also, that also, you know, Masons are going, are going to want to hear about this from a Mason. Right. You're right. You know, You're right. and uh, you know, and people, I don't know, like if I, I go to the gym, right. People are going to want to hear from it from somebody who goes to the gym like them. Exactly. You know, we yeah. all have our different, um, you know, we're conduits for different communities. Right. Totally. So, we we need all hands on deck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, you know? totally. Yeah, the, and and the Masons have been awesome with me for, about all this stuff. My yeah, my brothers have been really really cool. They've been like, you know, hey, check it out. They've been telling other brothers about you know my channel and, and yeah and stuff. And so they've been cool. And then they're asking me questions and 
you know, we got some brothers out there that are pilots and then some of them are military and some other stuff. So I've been having some conversations with them. That's been really interesting that they wouldn't have had before this, you know, because like, you know, like you said, the stigma is finally kind of the veil is kind of getting tossed to the side now. So I think that we yeah. can finally have this conversation and, and now do it in a way. And you're right. All the esoteric stuff. Everything kind of from masonry kind of goes back to that ancient history, ancient knowledge, the mystery schools, and, and man, UFOs is a big oh, yeah. part of big part of that, man. And I, Rosicrucianism, I mean, that's like that. That is the Rosicrucian. I mean, Jacques Vallee and Heineck were interested in Rosicrucianism, yeah. and Rosicrucianism deals with like the breathing techniques, meditation, astral projection. It's like, dude, that stuff is right there with UFOs. And, uh, you know, the people that yeah. practice that stuff, yeah, they know, they know, mm -hmm. because a lot of them have had experiences, totally. you know, whether you want to say it's with a non-human intelligence or whatever, mm -hmm. um, it all goes into the realm of UFOs, you know, it's all right there. Dude, you hit it right and, on the head. Totally. Yeah. And, um, I mean, even Dr. Greer talks about a story of Rosicrucian, uh, I think he was a guy in the CIA, he was a Rosicrucian came to him and said, Hey, listen, I had this experience. What's going on? He said, I had an astral projection. And I wasn't trying to do any kind of UFO stuff. I was just doing an astral projection. Right. And I bumped into a UFO. <laughs> and, and he he said, How did that happen? And you know, you know, whether you believe it or not, Greer's explanation was, well, they were in between, you know, they were phasing between like 3D reality and like, you know, the a deeper consciousness or astral, mm -hmm. you know, that's how they blip in and out of reality, uh, you know, according to him. Yeah. Uh, which I think that there's some truth to. Um, and you know, he was able to actually bump it even in an energetic state because they were phased in a similar vibration. Wow. That's, that's how he was able to actually bump it and not just go straight through it. Whoa. And, and, uh, the guy says, yeah, they were looking at me like, dude, watch where you're going <laughs> you know, kind of thing. But <laughs> it's like, I'm it, walking you know, here, I'm walking here. <laughs> this guy was just a Rosicrucian doing his practices and he ended up having a CE5. Wow. He had a UFO experience. Uh, because it ties in with meditation and consciousness and astral projection, all that, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, I think that's going to be an important step going forward, the integration of those kind of concepts and ideas. And I think, you know, science is kind of even catching up with that, like parallel realities and different dimensions and string theory and all those kind of things yeah. are really along the lines of where, you know, it's like we had to be this far along for people to, to get that kind of concept. And I think it's going to, it's, it's so weird how things are coming together from all angles and really coming full circle. It's like, too good to be true in a way, you know, <laughs> it's just like the design of consciousness, you know, the architect, however it was laid out is like, yeah, such of such synchronicity. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, Diana Pasolka, I mean, said it really well in her book was, you know, that basically like the, the things that people experienced in a religious, uh, kind of case for throughout history are now looked upon in a scientific way. So you can look at, you can, okay, by location, for example, some of the saints will be able to by locate, right? Well, now you can say, well, that is theoretically possible through quantum, you know, mechanics, like so, so the quantum state, right? You could be in both places at the same time. So there's like this, you know, science is proving some of the things out that, you know, mystics or different religions or mystery schools or whatever have known throughout the beginning of time. Right. And now it's, coming, yeah. it's like, and now it's okay to talk about because science can prove it. And in, in yeah, the theory and anyway. back then, you know, and that's part of the reason for the mystery schools is because this stuff had to be hidden because they'd burn you alive. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, that's how, you know, it's, it's crazy to think even, you know, 200 years ago, you know, 300 years ago, they had no idea that the earth was round and it's, it's crazy to think it's just crazy right. how far we've come. And it's really like, taken off at this point. And I think the idea of the UFO is going to take that so much further. That's really our stepping stone to, to what I call the greater reality. Mm -hmm. That's why I often, you know, associate uh, contact and UFOs with uh, like an awakening experience. Totally is. It because totally it, is. It's, it's a tangible one. Right. You know, it's, it's one that's subjective, but there's an objective aspect to it. Um, you know, whether it's contact or just the UFO in general, you know, right, having right. a sighting, you know, it, it just shatters your paradigm and what you think. And that's in, uh, that's like one of the insight stages in, in meditation and Buddhism Right, is, um, is that uh, 
change the the alter you know your your entire paradigm shifts Mm -hmm. you know and from that point there's like no going back it's it's um i I can't remember if um who says and well who the who the author is who who um did this but it's like the white crow theory right have you ever heard that i can't remember no no Uh, so it's like have you ever seen a white crow like all crows are black right if you ever seen a white crow, then it completely just destroys your paradigm at that point, right? Because you're you know all crows are black, but until you see yeah. a white, until you've yeah. seen a white one, it's the same kind of deal, right? Like you may think UFOs are real or whatever, but like you said, unless you see one or experience it or have an experience, it doesn't open then your you, mind to that, right? Then you understand, right? Then you have that ex- that experience. It's a what in Buddhism they call or you know vipassana, an inside experience. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's beyond the the intellectual level. You know, you can break um, kind of knowledge down to, to um, in different ways, but um, understanding something on an intellectual level um, and then having an experience, you know, that's a completely different um, insight. You know, it changes uh, everything, you know, yeah. from a personal experience. And that's what UFOs do. Yeah, big time. Yeah, yeah. For everybody. I mean, at, at all walks of life, all ages, you know, I mean, and I think that's, time is coming. I think that's, that's, um, it's going to be a great time to, to be alive, man. And I appreciate you doing this for me, man. Thanks. Thanks again. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. It's, it's a pleasure. I can't wait to do many more of these. I'm talking many more, man. We're going to have like a regular series going. Here. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. We're going to have to, we're going to have to come up with a catchy logo and some kind of cool music and some graphics or something. <laughs> that's cool. For, yeah. That's it. That's a fun part for me. <laughs> yeah, man. I'll, you're I'll think of something. You're good at that. I like that. It's fun. You know, it's a, gr- a great way to hone your, your creativity. Yeah, man. And you do so. I love your memes too, by the way, man. You, you have the oh, best, you yeah. have the best I love memes. Those. Dude, oh, I love them too, man. You just throw the, the best quotes up with the memes of, of everybody, and man, and they circulate. And I think that's amazing, dude. I think you got to keep, don't stop, do that. Because every yeah, time thanks. I see what I'm yeah, like. Yeah, because I think, I, I, to me, it was like another one of those, it's like a way to, to, to conveniently, you know, impart an important message. Right. You know, some of those quotes, I'm like, man, I, just, I mean, they stand out to me. These things pop out to me. Yeah. Like if I'm using a quote in one of these uh, infographics or memes. Yeah, yeah. It's like. You know, I read it and I'm like, yeah, you have it isolated. You just look at that. I mean, for for me in, in, in like a contemplative tradition of like uh, Johnny Yoga or anything like that, mm-hmm. you could take any one of those memes and just contemplate that, right? Yeah, yeah. It's totally. like, wow. You know, you just sit and meditate on that and like the implications of that. And it's like profound. Yeah, dude. So keep doing it. <laughs> They're I awesome. Will. I will, man. <laughs> I don't know you. I don't know you got to go, man. So I really appreciate this, yeah. dude. Yeah. Dude, honestly, you got bigger and better things to do. And and uh, oh no, <laughs> just a family life, you know. <laughs> I'm right there with you. I'm surprised my wife's not standing behind me with a frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to I swear to God, one of these talks, she's gonna come down here and hit me straight in the head with the frying yeah. pan. Oh no, I I'm, I owe my wife now for this one. So. Oh shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right. Yeah, me too, though. She's- I have an excuse to make it up for her now. Uh, there you go. I have Perfect. an excuse to go out to dinner. Oh, there you go. Perfect, man. <laughs> well, thanks a bunch, dude. I'm going to, you know, see you again soon. I'm going to, um, you know, be looking forward to doing this again a lot, man. So thanks a bunch, James. Yeah, I love you, brother. It's an honor and a pleasure, man. Keep doing what you're doing as well, man. Love you too, man. And I really appreciate it. It's The honor is all mine, man. Thanks again. Yeah, definitely, man. Take care.